Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is Randy back here again. This is not a Defense Saga video or an Iron Man from Hell video. This is just something a little bit more casual, basically involving me making yet another unique account. Another account. I still am highly focused on the Defense Saga series. That's the main entire series for this channel going on right now. I'm just doing a very long RNG based grind. We've been going at this grind for over three months, and I wish I could tell you what that was, but not just yet. Hopefully we'll get what we need soon, and the RNG grind will be over. But in the meantime, I want you to enjoy some little bits and bobs, and today's video is going to be going over another unique account that I wanted to build before it becomes extinct, probably in just a week or two. So what are we making, and what is going to be this rare account that is in today's video? Well, I wanted to take on Temple of Ikov as a level 3, something no one's ever done before, much less as a level 3 hardcore Iron Man here as you can see. That's because Temple of Ikov normally says it requires 40 range, but today, with a cool little manip, not a bug, well maybe you could consider it a bug, but you know, what's a bug? We're gonna be completing Temple of Ikov as a level 3, going through the whole quest as a level 3, so I believe after this video is posted and after this is looked over, if it's not already been looked over on my IP, then a lot of the things you're seeing in today's video aren't going to be possible anymore in the coming week. That's why I believe this account will probably become extinct, if not completely banned off the face of the earth by the end of this video. Ho oh, ho yes, that's right, there's going to be more than one minute in this entire video, so I hope you all learned something, I hope I learned something, and most importantly, I hope you enjoyed the process. But first, I have to give a shout out to our sponsor for today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. One of the best games on the planet, if not the best game on the planet, and one that has never chain banned me. With hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 600 champions blessed, you can build your team, develop your champions, and raid your way. So there's a lot of luck when summoning new champions inside of Raid, and that's why I'm going to go over my top three luck boosting activities I use for pre-summoning inside this game. So before I summon a new champion, I'll go ahead and light my candle I got from my local witchcraft store for fast luck. For my number two luck boosting activity, I'll even go ahead and put on a luck boosting frequency. This uses binaural beats to access hidden mechanisms in my mind in order to possibly draw more luck from inside games as you've seen me do on RuneScape itself. And lastly for my third activity, I'll manifest my energy into the phone while I physically pull for that champion. So by doing these three things, as you can see, I somehow pulled a legendary. It worked. So Raid also keeps their game updated and they keep it therefore fun. This month they're going to be running a huge series of Summer Splash events where you can get your hands on some incredible skins for everyone's favorite dwarf, Trunda. Oh, and one more thing. You got it. Ultimate Death Knight, coming August 2022. Make sure you get in now if you want to be a part of it. So what are you waiting for? Click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on screen and you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion tarot, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. So this is going to be a great start to this video, but I cannot even create this account. I keep getting website access denied every time I press the create button on the account. I don't know if this is because like I'm IP banned off this site or something. I don't, I have no clue, but we're a little bit stumped here. I think I'm going to have to look into some old logins and see if possibly I have one that's already created from like pre EOC era. So I did not want to wait an hour or two just to make a new account, so I found some really old username login account that I could actually use, and it's already dressed in a bot outfit, and I've got this weird prompt when I log in. I, I guess I don't get to choose what I'm wearing, I'm just going to look like a fucking bot. And yeah, I don't even know what my username is set to on this account, if anything at all, because I have not... I must have logged in real quick and then like exited out of this account. I don't know what's happened, but uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and start this up. Okay, so we can see what the username here, that's always nice, John Cena 732 it turns out. Anyways, I wanted to go ahead and be a member before I even did Tutorial Island, just because why not? I had one of these extra cards, you know, of course, that I stole from Toys R Us. I'm not gonna, you know, pay for membership with a credit card like Jagex recommends. Of course, I've got to use one of these uh, redeemable prepaid cards instead. 24 days of membership. I'm going to go ahead and get this done, and I don't know what I'm going to do first. I have a few plans that possibly will work. I need recoils. I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to be getting recoils 
which is sort of an extinct method. It's not fully changed, but I've used this method and I've shown parts of this method in my prior Defense Pure Saga episodes, and I, I haven't shown the full method. The part that I will show you today is how I actually got to be able to enchant recoils inside of raids, but unfortunately the part of the method that's patched or fixed is the one that no longer grants magic XP, but luckily for the Fire Lord, I will only need, I believe, two or three recoils, which I can get before I hit two magic, because we're zero magic XP, we're level three. So I can enchant, I believe, three recoils before hitting two magic and before ruining this account, and I'm going to use those on the boss. So I get one attempt at the boss, obviously because I'm a hardcore, but also because I only have so many recoils, or I will have so many recoils on this account. Also, no, it's not just a simple solution of making recoils on a level 3 Iron Man with one magic to kill the boss. There's even another manip I'm going to have to do to get real damage off on the boss and get the kill credit. I'm going to go ahead and become a hardcore Iron Man. That's because I just want this to be a little bit more difficult. There will be some tick eating involved in today's video, and I got to make sure my ping is perfect for that. I'm going to have to hop off a of VPN for once in my life. One reason why I made this account a member was because the group Iron Man area. I was thinking maybe with this new bridge intact, the entire island might not be safe zoned out in PvP worlds like it once was, and maybe you could get off the island without wasting any combat XP. But even this dock over here, is PvP safe area. I was hoping maybe it's now you could get two accounts, kill each other, and get off the island a little bit quicker without any magic XP from the tutorial over there. Holy shit, I just realized I'm still in the PvP world and I just sent my account straight into Lumbridge as a hardcore. Oh my god, I am a hardcore, right? Yeah, okay. But if you guys are new to RuneScape or you haven't been on in a while, check this out. RuneLight has a new feature. If you shift hold, you can swap the left click on the pickpocket of the man. So now I'm not going to attack or talk to the man. I'm going to pickpocket him by just left clicking. This is actually brilliant if I could actually pickpocket him and not get stunned instantly. I need this defense bonus for later. I'm going to be doing some two tick oak log cutting, hopefully. I have this sort of planned out in my head, very um, scrambled around and, and what I have to do and where, where I'm going and what I'm exactly doing here. But we're going to get to it and I do need this hardcore Iron Man armor because it's a good bonus, of course. Okay, that's five thieving. We can now move on to cake stalls. But first, I'm going to go ahead and start X marks the spot for that client of Karen prereq. I need client of Karen done because I'm going to use the favor certificate on Hosidia's house so I can actually thieve at the fruit stalls at level 25 just because fruit stall thieving is one of the best XPs at that level and 42 thieving is a requirement for Temple of Ikov. Also, I think I'm going to use the X marks the spot lamp on smithing here. That's going to give me four smithing from one, I believe and therefore just three more levels will be needed for bronze knives, as I will need a throwing type of weapon to complete Temple of Ikov with my Manips on this level 3. So I will be showing you how I'm going to enchant those recoils later on in this video, but I do need sapphire rings first, and this was a big stump for me. I realized I'm going to need to possibly get these out of oak trees, get birds nests out of oak trees, and hope they have sapphire rings in them. On average, I calculated this out to only take around 40 minutes if I'm two ticking an oak tree. Therefore, this would be a hell of a lot quicker than somehow getting quest supplies, gathering enough to do Knight's Sword, then training from like 31 to 40 smithing, then picking up a gold ore spawn in the wilderness so I can just smith a gold bar, as well as getting 20 crafting. So the goal right now is to find a way to two tick oaks at a very low level, and as well get the bird's nest out of those trees as fast as possible. Alright, so I'm looking for a place to two tick woodcut oaks. I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it because there's so many limited multi areas. I'm sure there's a place. I need something with like low level NPCs like rats, not like these jail guards here. You could probably do it with the jail guards here because this is multi once you go inside here I believe. But there's no low level NPCs that aren't going to kill me. I'm 10 HP and 1 defense and to 2 tick woodcut you need 2 NPCs on you with 4 tick attack speeds. There has to be something like a little rodent, a little fucking rat crawling around somewhere that I can just bounce off of. If only that squirrel over there was attackable, maybe that would be one. So like every other Iron Man in the game, I'm going to go ahead and buy some wines here just for some good starter food, possibly to run through the security stronghold with. So here we are, we're finishing X marks a spot for access to Klein of Karen now. Alright, I'm in the middle of Klein of Karen just wandering around Zaya, this fucked continent that's extremely massive for no reason. Once again, the continent I love. I don't know how far north this multi-zone goes, but there's a lot of oak trees around here. And if I can just find two four tick attack speed NPCs that are shit, there's actually a rabbit right there. Hold on. 
Is there another one? <laughs> is there another rabbit? Okay, so I use the shift click tag all feature. It does look like there's more rabbits. I just can't fucking see them unless they're tagged. So this could be a meta. I don't know if rabbits will ever hit on me. They've got one stats and negative aggressive stats just like seagulls. So I'm pretty sure they're always going to hit zero on me. The only problem is these do have negative defensive stats as well. So there is a possibility I'm going to hit on them and get XP, but... I think that is a, a low chance if I get like a hand fan from Diango to get negative crush. There is oak trees, there is rabbits. This looks like so far the most optimal multi-combat place I can two tick rabbits for birds and S for sapphire rings. And yes, I've looked into every way to get a gold bar, to get gold ore. I don't want to have to get 40 smithing for gold ore. There's a certain way to get some gold bars, but it's pretty ridiculous to get enough to actually kill the fire lord. You know, actually... I could really do with a thousand coins on this account. Fuck, what should I take? It's a gamble. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a gambling man. I'm gonna have to take the mystery box. You know what they say, I always take the mystery box. Unless, Unless it's, it's a fucking onion. onion. Oh my god, I should have taken the thousand coins. I actually need to buy cosmic ruins, bronze bars, all kinds of things in this account to get this done. I'm gonna go ahead and head back to Lumbridge. I'm gonna gather my food up and I'm going to set an authenticator in this account because I will need one to do security stronghold unfortunately. Hopefully there's not some old ass email attached to this old ass account that I don't even know how to get access to or else I can't set an authenticator and I cannot get the coin reward. Alright we've got the authenticator set on John Cena here and uh, we're gonna be logging back in now and taking the count check. Shortcut to Edgeville so I can run through the security stronghold. Here we are, 10k cash coming right up out of the box of health here. All right, we're starting Monk's Friend Quest to get a head start on the woodcutting level to 15 to do those two tick oaks. As well, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a lit candle here because I will need that to go down in the room for Boots of Lightness later on in the Temple of Ikov quest. Also, I'm going to need a knife somewhere around here, hopefully, to actually slash the web, not only in the Temple of Ikov quest for Boots of Lightness, but also in the wilderness, which I'll be going to for those runes in the rune shop here. All right, here we go. Monk's friend quest completed one time. I, did, I didn't loop it. I'm not getting unlimited woodcutting XP this time. 13 woodcutting. That's so close to 15. Not quite 15 yet. Can't exactly kill, kill, kill oak, oak trees yet. Can't exactly chop oak trees yet, but close. I mean, I could sit here and chop a few of these and just drop them and get the level right now. Well, let's just do that real quick. Let's get 15 woodcutting while we're here. I probably should wait to do this because I might get killed in the wilderness and have to restart the account anyways. As well, I was going to actually go do arty cake thieving because technically the pathway is a little bit faster rather than coming back to arty to go ahead and get 25 thieving while I'm here. So let's hope that the wilderness is as dead as they say it is because I really don't want to get killed out there. I am level 3. I, it, it's a very low probability that anyone can even attack me that's out there in the first place, but we'll see. Also, I wish these eight law ruins were like cosmic ruins, but I think we can sell those to the maid shop we're going to anyways. There we go, 15 woodcutting. We can now two tick oak trees in Hosidius by the woodcutting guild, hopefully. We'll test the method in a little bit. Huge achievement right here. Huge breakthrough right here. The shop has knives, so I can slash through webs once again. I could probably actually use this axe anyways. I don't I don't know. I know you can't use a pickaxe, uh, but just in case, we'll buy the knife. Why not? Okay. All right, we're here. We're going to start the long, long grind of getting a whole 5 to 25 thieving at this stall, and we're hiding from the baker by literally just being inside of his body. You gotta love RuneScape mechanics, I mean bugs, I mean unintended mechanics, I mean what's the difference? I'm actually about to fall asleep, but there we go, 25 thieving, holy shit, I was literally like dozing off listening to Ziz mixes. I'm gonna go ahead and start Temple of Ikov through talking to Lucian. Now an easy, simple fix to what you're gonna see later is they could just add hard requirements of 40 range and 42 thieving to the start of this quest, but there are no hard requirements, this is a super old quest. I don't even need the 42 thieving, much less the 40 range, technically, to start this quest by talking to Lucian over here on my route, literally, to the lever. This thing right down here, we're gonna cross that off. We don't need that. We got manips, okay? Manips are much better than you, magic, or dark bows. But we do not have the 20 limpworts. We're going to have to literally farm those because we're three combat. We can't kill hill giants, and if we did, we get XP. We only need level one farming to farm limpworts, so we're going to literally farm limpworts i think it's only level one farming let's let's hope oh fuck it's 26 uh, i don't know what i was thinking there why did i think it was level one farming well it was i was fucking wrong 
I can't spawn hit anymore either, so I can't really kill hill giants unless I had a cannon, and I'm not gonna get 600k for a cannon. Fuck that. Is really the only way to do this farming? I think I'm literally gonna have to. Uh, there's no quest I can even do to get to give farming that like I have the requirements for that I can actually do. I'm going to have to like farm. Legitimately, I'm going to have to farm potatoes or some shit and onions and cabbages and, and eventually sweet corn with no teleports. And that's another reason why I should just have these thoughts scrambled in my head. Because I could have used X marks the spot to at least get like four farming, but instead here we are at literally one farming. So this is, like I said, going to be fun. And we made it inside. I'll buy three cosmics. I only need technically two recoils unless this guy like regens like crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and home teleport now back to Lumbridge and buy some bronze bars near the Shantae Pass. Then we're gonna head back to Draenor, possibly start farming a little bit at least. Then we're gonna make our way to Hosidius, possibly do some fruit stalls, or I might do the oak trees first actually, because I think I just wanna get the sapphire rings out of the way. All right, so I think I'm gonna need around 47 bronze bars in order to get seven smithing, then smith around 100 bronze knives, which I think 100 bronze knives will be enough for what we're trying to do here. These bronze bars are way more affordable than what I thought they would be. So I might actually buy upwards of enough to create 200 knives, which is going to be, I think, around 70 to 75 bronze bars. So roughly I'll get three inventories of bronze bars before I leave here. As well, I do need to buy a hammer. Where did the guy go? Here he is. I do need to buy a hammer to actually smith these bronze bars because I do not have a hammer in the bank, I believe. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the shortcut over here to Port Serum from this desert area rather than running all the way here to Draenor. Port Serum's a little bit closer of a route. And if you didn't know about this, yeah, it's like a little easter egg. You can get thrown in jail and then transported to Port Serum from Shantae Pass for a small fee of nothing. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out, let's see, Hand Fan because I don't want to get XP on the little rabbits that I'm going to be aggroing. I might still be able to hit them if I'm unlucky because they do have negative defense bonus and this is not a cure-all, it does not always hit zero, it just has a lot less of a chance. And I'm also going to go ahead and get, uh, let's see, yeah, I'll get a Chronicle. I really don't need much money for anything, I'm going to say that and then I'm going to find out I need money. But I, I'm going to get 10 Chronicle pages just to have. I'm going to use some of them, yes, but for most of them they're probably just going to sit there forever on the account. And right after I said that I remembered I need farming supplies, so I am going to have to buy some farming supplies, some seeds, I'm going to go ahead and buy some of these potato seeds. I, I think I'm only going to mess with allotments for now. I'm going to go run over there to the farming supply shop, buy some things from there as well. So maybe I shouldn't have bought 10 pages, but I, I don't think anything from the farming supply area is really worth that much. As well, I do need sacks because I'm going to need sacks of potatoes or onions or something to actually tick eat the boss inside of Icov quest, which is kind of good that I'm farming already because I'll be able to get those potatoes or onions or whatever I decide to use and put those inside sacks and therefore I don't have to actually pick potatoes from this potato patch down that way. Alright, so I've got some farming supplies, I've got some sacks which I'll use for the tick eats later during the Fire Lord boss. Five compost for now. I think there's also some uh, farming shops inside Hosidius if I need them, so. so I could like go buy pineapples from charter ships. Also, is there a requirement for farming to make super compost? Okay, so I can make super compost at level one farming. That would also give me a little bit more XP. I might look into that. I might look into charter ships and how much pineapples cost here as well, because actually putting shit in a compost bin could be a good way to get early farming levels up. I don't know. I've never farmed this early. I've always done like quests and other things, but this account really can't do a lot of the quests and activities that I've been able to do on all of my other accounts. The pineapples, they cost five coins each. We're buying a full inventory right now. It's about 100 GP for one inventory. That's not terrible. The quest end. So here we go. He's gonna go ahead and give me the favor so I can actually thieve inside Hosidius. Oh my god, I forgot. He does give two antique lamps. Can I use those? I might be able to use those on farming. That's perfect. I totally forgot that he gives these. That means I can like bypass potatoes entirely, dude. This is perfect. What's the next thing I can actually plant here? 10 farming, 12 tomatoes. So I have to get tomato seeds. They don't sell those at that shop. So I'm gonna have to find another way to do that. I almost forgot as well. I gotta put these pineapples in the compost bin here. Gonna try and find the best oak spot 
It looks like there's two oaks right next to each other over here. here. Okay, perfect. So this is actually two oaks back to back, barely. They look like diagonal, but you can actually sit on this tile and, and chop them. So this is what I wanted exactly. And now I just got to get two rabbits over to me, get them off ticked, two ticks apart from each other, and just hope I don't actually hit these things. I actually changed my accurate to aggressive, so I don't have the extra accuracy that comes with, um, you know, actually using accurate. Instead... I have the most minimal chance of hitting these things, hopefully. We'll find out here in a second. No, it's it's literally the singular tile that Diagress is on. That is so unfortunate. I mean, if I path to this, which way is it going to take me? Take me right. Okay, and then left. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to swap the left click to walk here so I can't actually, you know, attack these right off the bat. This is probably actually better with the bronze axe because I'm going to chop this tree down less. And I'm going to have to move over to the other tree less, meaning I'm not going to have to mess up the two ticks as often whenever this tree gets chopped down. Because every time I am hitting this tree, it is rolling a chance, but it's a low chance because we have a bronze axe. But it's always rolling the same chance on getting the nest, luckily. So the nest rate doesn't go down, just the log rate, which means the actual chopping of the tree goes down too. I bet you guys have never seen two tick wood cutting with a spade. So I'm using a spade as my one tick off action instead of the ground because there's these logs under me and honestly the click box of this oak tree is massive. I can't really click on the ground under me without having to like right click. So I am using the one tick click off action of the spade to two tick wood cut. All right, our first bird's nest. I don't think there's anything good in this because obviously there's no ring in this thing. It's going to be some shit seeds. Orange tree seeds. Yeah, I'll never be able to use those. So we're super unlucky right now. We've been doing this for nearly an hour. We just got the one nest with the seed drop. We've probably had over 2,000 hits on this tree. Chances to get a nest and it's a 1 in 256. Gonna have to come back here and risk attacking these rabbits again because I do need to check on my farming patches. And I do need to get farming up at every possible second I can. So I've got a patch of dead cabbages. This is only giving 11 XP a harvest. And if we're only using this one near the trees for now, this is gonna be some terrible farming XP. All right, I just got 30 thieving. Trying to get some compost and some thieving XP at the same time. These pineapples are a lot more rare than I thought they would be, but also, Guess what we got here? A papaya. I bet you all didn't know this. Papaya gives 5% run energy. Look at that. Just what I needed. But we're getting some of this pineapple to use in the compost bin without having to run all the way back to the charter ship. I've decided I'm just going to get one bird's nest with a sapphire ring in it out of the tree because at the rate I'm going now, it's extremely slow. And I can do goblin diplomacy for one gold bar. And then I can do murder mystery for the crafting level to almost make sapphire rings. Quick tip, if you guys didn't know, you can use the strange fruits and papayas here in order to get your run energy back up, and then you can run between the stalls for a little bit more thieving XP per hour, and of course for me, more pineapples per hour. Alright, that's another load of pineapples and strange fruits, so I think these pineapples should easily complete this compost bin. Now, a lot of you might be asking, why isn't he doing bag plants? That's the optimal method till about 15 farming. Well, I can't actually do those because they cost 1k each. It would take my whole cash deck just to get six bag plants, and I really need this cash probably for something else. Not sure what yet, and six bag plants is not going to do the trick. Alright, we've got them lured, and we're going to do some more two tick wood cutting with a spade. I'm literally at 35 wood cutting. I've only gotten one bird's nest. There's something wrong here. Stupid Icov hardcore Iron Man problems like this. I don't think this would ever happen to anyone under any normal circumstances. Like what the fuck is going on? Why is this guy in the middle of Karend chopping a fucking oak tree with two rabbits on him with a bronze ax and full of hardcore gear and a pendant evolution and then fucking taking these trees with a fucking spade? I don't know, man, but like I need a bird's nest with a sapphire ring. Just, just one. one. There's just no bird's nest falling out of this fucking tree. I'm going to go back to my original patch, um, steal from the seed stall, possibly get some tomato plants to upgrade. Since we now have 12 farming, we actually have 13 farming. Wow. I don't know. I've been here a whole five minutes. I don't think I can fucking stand this anymore, to be honest with you. This is fucking god awful. What are these seeds? 
I'm just gonna wait till I can get Master Farmer's Thieved at 38. Probably do 38 to 42 there, get some seeds along the way. I'm going to go ahead and buy some more pineapple while I am in Port Serum still. The vegetation hasn't even finished rotting yet. I thought I was gonna get 15 farming, but uh... We're 22 XP off of 15 farming. <laughs> We're not even gonna get 15 farming tonight. Oh my god. Couldn't I literally just use cabbage at the other guy, but for some reason this leprechaun doesn't take it? Is it because he's actually near cabbage? That's really fucking weird. Is that like a failsafe to actually stop people from noting cabbage nearby? Like, what the fuck? The other farm, the leprechaun takes my cabbage and notes it. I would have never guessed that, but I, I guess we can't keep our cabbage, and I kind of needed that. Um, I'm gonna go buy a sack over here and fill one up with cabbage because I, I did need to keep, like, these 1 HP healing food for the fight later on. Uh, I really don't want to drop my cabbage, my precious cabbage. So, I'm gonna buy a sack and fill some of this up with it. So I went ahead and swapped the left click to empty on these sacks of cabbages. I'm going to have to do it on potatoes and onions too if I use those. But I wanted to see if I swapped the empty on a bag of 5 cabbages, if that would also swap the empty automatically on a bag of 10 because there are different item IDs. And fortunately it did. I was just thinking about this because possibly, you know, I could empty one of these and click the next one and, and refill it and not be able to tick eat and die to the fire lord later on. All right, I just got 38 thieving, so that means we can finally pick Pocket Master Farmers, get some better seeds, so we can actually get farming up a little bit quicker. We're still only 17 farming, so I'm gonna be the cool kid while these losers over here are pickpocketing this Master Farmer. I've got the Ruin Light once again. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say this. I have the Ruin Light custom left click on for this one over here, so I can go ahead and be the only cool kid farming this Master Farmer. All right, so we're one HP'd. This, <laughs> I can only take like three hits from the master farmer before I have to use one of these jugs of wine, but we've already gotten two tomato seeds and I've barely farmed this thing. We've gotten a guam seed as well, like, and plant that. I can get some extra farming XP from that. So yeah, I'm going to be looking for some low level herb seeds, uh, some more tomato seeds, possibly some sweet corn seeds. I almost forgot. I need limpwort seeds to actually get the 20 limpworts for Temple of Ikov quest. So hopefully... I'm gonna get those limpwort seeds now because that's the most important. All right, so we've got some seeds here from Master Farmers. I'm still only 39 and a half, almost 40 thieving. So we're gonna be probably doing Master Farmers till 42 thieving because I've only gotten one limpwort seed, but I do have some of these seeds I can plant here for some better XP. All right, I swear to God, everything out here on this level three is trying to kill me. Even this level six mugger, I had to corner trap here just to plant my precious red berry seeds. And yes, this is all for farming XP, I figured. Might as well get it where I can. There we go, 42 thieving. That is the goal. That is the Temple of Ikov requirement, but it looks like we might be getting more than that because I've only gotten a secondary limpwort seed. I'm probably going to need around four limpwort seeds to actually pull 20 limpworts, maybe even more, maybe less if I'm extremely lucky because it's a random three to like nine limpwords you can pull from a singular plant. So here we go, we got some new crops for once. We have tomatoes. We have a diseased herb. Holy shit, we better cure that thing. There we go, 20 farming. Big headway into the farming grind. We've also got 20 farming, so that means I can plant these very few sweet corn seeds I have here. This guy thinks I'm covered in menstrual blood. He just can't, like, fathom the fashion scape that I'm wearing right now. There we go, 23 farming, just three more levels somehow. This did not take as long as I thought it did once I got the seeds from Master Farmers. I no longer had to just mainly, like, plant cabbages because I could actually get seeds other than the ones I could buy from the stall shop. So this is going by a lot quicker now that I do have these higher tier seeds. I'm gonna go ahead and run another farm run before I try and go for that last limpwort seed. Possibly I'll be at 26 very soon, so a couple more farm runs, and I'm just gonna keep thieving until I hit 26, and then we'll see if the limpwort seeds that I have will be enough. Yeah, nasturtium. A new plant, a new flower I can finally plant. Wow, look at that. Also, I almost forgot we have a bush patch growing over here. Hoo hoo hoo. All right, we just got our fourth limpwort seed. Hopefully that will be enough. We're almost at 45 thieving. What the fuck am I doing? So I might go ahead and try and thieve another as we are going to need to wait a little bit longer on these patches. As you can see, the patch timer on Ruin Light over there. And we already got another limpwort seed, so I'm actually going to go ahead and run over, do my 7 smithing requirement for bronze knives, smith the bronze knives, and go from there. So, no sound effect, with area sound effects off, and a sound effect with area sound effects on, even though it's personalized to your player. 
Interesting. I swear to God, smithing used to make the sound effect because I never have area sound effects on and I always could hear myself smithing. Is this a new update, Jagex? Seven smithing. We've hit our goal right there and now I can actually make bronze knives. I make five at a time. I think I should have enough to make around 200 bronze knives with the rest of the bronze bars I have. 255 total bronze knives. We've got 10 smithing from that, 7 to 10 smithing, and these are actually going to be used to kill the Fire Lord boss. I'm going to have to hit at least a 1 to register the kill count. The rest of the damage, I plan to recoil. So another way to actually get around talking to these guys forever, you just go ahead and use the armor on them, and it goes straight into the dialogue. If you don't do that, they're going to talk about each other looking fat. They're going to go through some useless dialogue till finally you can say, I have blue armor waiting for you. Instead... Just use the armor on them. Okay, here we go. Goblin Diplomacy completed. We've got a little bit of crafting XP to give us a head start on the 20 crafting requirement for that sapphire ring. As well, more importantly, we've gotten that gold bar now because I don't have to get 40 smithing to smith that thing. So that's why we've kind of avoided just making these rings from scratch. We've gotten kind of halfway through that process already just by doing the Goblin Diplomacy quest here. 26 farming. I actually managed to get 26 farming off this. I can go ahead and plant those limpwort seeds now. I'm going to have to literally like watch over those things like crazy to make sure they don't die because I can't afford to get another limpwort seed. That shit took me like an hour a seed. Here we go. I bought some plant cure and we're going to literally hover over our first limpwort root to make sure it grows. Oh my god, did I forget to compost that shit? Okay, I can still compost it. Phew. I was like, did I already fuck this up? All right, so I picked the first limper and I've literally been standing in the same tile for like an hour. The second one just grew. I only got the minimum amount from the last limpwort, three whole limpworts. So hopefully this one will actually provide for us because I need 20 of these things once again. Please give me more than three. <laughs> Fuck, it only gave me four. That's more than three, but that's not what I was hoping for. I need more limpworts. We're gonna two tick woodcut again. I want to still try and get that ring of sapphire from a nest. I don't know how I've been so unlucky so far. And why aren't these things still tagged? Fucking rune light. Come on, buddy. But let's do this. I hope it's this one. Oh, and we just, of course, we hit a one right away. That's awesome. All right, that's 37 wood cutting. Looks like my farming patch is done. So we're going to have to come back here and risk hitting on these rabbits yet again. Hopefully the limpworts are not dead. I did leave the patch. Still no bird's nest since that singular one. I don't know what is up with the bird's nest today, but they're nowhere to be found. Thank God it looks like our limpworts survived. Please more than three or four limpworts from this patch this time. Let's see. Come on, give me a big draw. Three. Ah. Oh. There's only two seeds left. I do not want to have to go back to Master Farmers. It's going to take forever to get more seeds. I think I'm going to leave this patch again and just hope for the best because I do really want to get these nests out of the way as well. Wow, a papaya tree seed. Just what I needed. Why does it keep giving me three limpworts, dude? I need more. Fuck. Another bird's nest with no fucking rings in it. Stupid ass seeds. No way, I just got a bird's nest with a fucking egg in it. Four. 27 farming, I guess. But that makes us three dry. We're gonna have to go back to Master Farmers and get another limpwort seed now. Fuck! There's probably a hundred people in the comments already saying, Buy a steel axe, it's better than the bronze. But with cutting down bird's nest out of trees, every two ticks I get a chance of a bird's nest. So I don't think the tier of the axe is going to matter, but I've caved in because I'm so dry. I'm sorry, bronze axe. We had a nice run. We got to 39 wood cutting with a fucking bronze axe and only got three bird's nest out of the tree. I think I'm just super unlucky here. I think that's all it is, but I'm getting rid of that cursed bronze axe nonetheless. I'm going to try and steal one more limpwort seed to plant it because we are at 17 out of 20 limpworts and we have no more seeds left. We just got a bird's nest out of the tree here. Right before this is ready, it's now ready, actually. We can pick that limpwort. We got a bird's nest. It's a ring. Please, be a sapphire ring. Please, 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 please. Yes! Yes! I've actually never been so happy in my life on this game. We got the sapphire ring. I didn't think it was possible. I was thinking, oh my god, dude. I'm gonna be here till 60 wood cutting. I'm so damn stubborn. Our luck was still terrible, but it, in the end, it came through. We got the sapphire ring. 
Now I've just got to go get the crafting up to 20 through Murder Mystery and through some bowstrings to make the other one. I have the gold bar in my bank. I'm going to buy the sapphire from Alcarid. And also, while we're here, we get the last of our limports. No matter what, we get at least three from this thing. And of course, the one I picked that I don't need the extras on has the extra two, has the most I've ever picked in one patch. But there we go. That's all our limports. We also got our ring. Amazing stuff right here. We can finally make some headway and we're almost ready to actually start the quest. All right, so I'm starting Murder Mystery for the crafting XP. It'll give me enough levels, I think, to actually craft bowstrings, which I'm gonna do in the Gnome Stronghold. But this is a very quick quest, almost no requirements besides three pots. And I don't know what crafting level this is gonna give me, but let's see, 12 crafting, so we can make bowstrings nice. This is honestly like the best place to train low level crafting. There's a spinning wheel right next to a flax patch right under this building. As soon as I'm done here with this inventory, you'll see exactly what I mean here. And there we go, 15 crafting. We're already getting close to 20, and we've only been here just a few minutes. All right, so we just got 20 crafting. As you can see, we crafted a few flax down there south of the Gnome Stronghold, or in the southern part of Gnome Stronghold. Now, this got me exactly the level I needed to now make sapphire rings and cut sapphires. I have a one last stop here in the Gnome Stronghold, and that is at our favorite food seller, Hudo. I used this guy, this brings me flashbacks a lot of going here on potato only hardcore Iron Man since I'm actually a hardcore Iron Man as well. I'm going to be buying potatoes, I might as well buy everything here and just put it in sacks. Potatoes, onions, cabbages, we need 1 HP healing food and we need it in sacks and I don't have enough from farming surprisingly, I thought I would. I have a few sacks filled but I'm going to need more than just the ones I have filled for instance I only have 5 full sacks. I'm gonna go ahead and bring like 10 of these and just keep buying them and filling them up. I'm gonna go ahead and smith this ring right here. This will be our last ring we need and voila, both rings are now made. What are these bots? Why do they all look the same? What's going on? That one's different. That guy's straight up an outcast to his kind. All right, so I do have to run through some lizardmen on my way to Cox in order to enchant these two rings. Fortunately, the lizardmen only max seven, so they can't max my whole HP here. I do have an anti-poison as well because they do poison me. I only had 10 jugs of wine though in the bank, and although this can heal me to max, I don't know if that'll be enough, so better safe than sorry. I went ahead and bought some kebabs. These kebabs are kind of hit or miss. I could eat one and it could heal me for almost nothing, but also, um, I really doubt I'm gonna go through more than 10 jugs of wine. Just better safe than sorry. What are you doing? No! <laughs> of course I just <laughs> ate- you just- <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it's your woodcutting stat. These kebabs are kinda hit Dude, or miss. Eat another one. Are you about to panic click a jug? Yeah. <laughs> Look at this AI. Dude, they're not- <laughs> What the <laughs> fuck? Oh my god! Whoa! 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 <laughs> oh, your baby bear cub. They're not thrower trolls, they're just trolls. Dude, look at them. So here we are. This is how I'm going to be getting recoils made on a level 3 Iron Man with only one magic. And I'm going to be boosting my magic to 7 with a Kodai potion inside this raid 1 room. So I actually had to scout vanguards as the first room. And then we have to have an Iron Man and a normal account do damage to the Vanguard in order to pick up the Kodai Potion and claim it as my own. So because a main and Iron Man are both killing this Vanguard right here and because the Iron Man has done majority damage, the room is just going to give the Kodai Potion to anyone, even other Iron Men like myself. Now I can pick up this Kodai Potion. But I'm not going to use it quite yet because I cannot actually enchant inside of raids. But there is one place I can enchant and this is the part of the method that's never been shown yet. Whenever you re-log into an instance like raids that actually allows you to re-log into it, there's going to be a black zone that it puts you in a split tick before it throws you in the actual raid. It's otherwise known as kind of like a loading zone. You can stall your character into this loading zone with an interface if you time it just right, which I messed up right here. So I'm just going to simply re-log and try again. So in this loading zone, you can enchant jewelry, but in the actual raid room, you cannot. That's where you're able to use the 7 magic boost from the Kodai potion to perfectly enchant these rings of recoil as a level 3 Iron Man. But there's a problem as I still get XP inside of this void, and this no longer nulls your XP. What we did before is we were able to use this void and we could teleport out in the void rather than not being able to teleport out in the actual raid. From there we'd interface the teleport then interface walk all the way to the fountain of ruin where we could then enchant recoils with zero magic XP. Unfortunately the interface walk 
no longer works. So you cannot transport this effect with your boost of 7 over 1 magic to the Fountain of Ruin anymore. And that's why we are only limited to a few recoils to enchant on this account. Wines weigh a lot and we need to be under 0 kilograms weight with Boots of Lightness and that means we can't take wines. Alright, so we need a weight of 4.5 or less. We have a little bit over that but I think we're going to eat some of the kebabs going through the giant bats and possibly skeletons and these weigh 0.25 each. I need to make sure I'm at least negative 1. Like I can't see the decimal on that shit but I want to say I need to get to 3.5 before I wear the actual boots and go down there because if I don't, I can fall into that lava and it can actually kill you. It can remove my hardcore status and that would be a ridiculous death actually just dying to falling in a pit of lava just because I didn't decide to weigh myself. Boots of Lightness have been acquired. First step of the quest practically is now completed. We are at 0 kg, but I do not trust that. I'm still 0 kg. I need to hit negative 1. Please don't fall down the pit of lava. Please, please, please don't fall down the pit of lava. Okay, we we made it over the bridge. How much does that weigh though? How much does the lever weigh? Imagine the, the lever weighs like three pounds. You go back over the bridge and it kills you like instantly. All right, we got the lever. I'm gonna wait for my run energy to go up just a little bit more before I make it back over to my food. What are these giant bats, Max? Probably like two or three. Now pull the lever. Holy shit, okay. That was a stall. I could not eat or anything during the stall. Holy shit. Okay, I'm gonna go back over here now, pick up my food because we no longer need to cross that bridge. Imagine if I like accidentally path back over that bridge and it just kills me. Technically, I'll only need one ice arrow. I don't need any more than that, so I just have to find one successful chest. First chest, give me the ice arrows. Can we do it? Can we get the first chest with the ice arrows? Let's see. Five ice arrows. Holy shit. All right, this is how we're gonna do it. I think this should be enough. The boss has around 59 health, but he can hit zeros pretty frequently on you. I tested this out prior. He does hit zeros even with one magic and some decent armor on, so I'm in full armor here because I want him to hit ones as much as possible. This actually does require me to hit a one on the boss to go ahead and get the kill. I can't just recoil the boss down or else I'll have to kill it again and again and again. So I do need to hit at least a 1 one time with the bronze knives, and I'm going to have auto retaliate on for that once I get in there. I'm going to switch this to rapid so I can hit as fast as possible. As well, we've got our ice arrows equipped here. That's going to basically allow me to use the knives with the arrows. I don't need the 40 range requirement with this. That's what's going to allow us to actually complete this quest with one range. Yep, that's right. We're level 3 still, and we're doing this quest. The first ever level 3 to complete this quest much less the first ever level 3 hardcore Iron Man to complete this quest. So we're going to go ahead and use these and take it with all these sacks of potatoes. That's the plan. We're going to wield our recoils. As well, another thing I did as a precautionary measure was that I actually made the left click drop on an empty sack. So I won't try and use a sack on a piece of food I'm trying to eat or I won't fill a sack that is empty because the auto left click on these is normally fill. As well, I could get really unlucky and just never hit that one with the bronze knife. So I'm going to get as many of these out as I can because I don't want to waste these rings of recoil and not hit a one and just sit here and, you know, not have the proper food to do this. One last precautionary measure. I'm going to go ahead and do the unthinkable. I'm going to get off this VPN and log on to my real IP so I have zero latency when I'm tick eating. It's going to be risky business and uh, I'm probably being watched on that IP, but we're going to do it only for a little bit. It's asking me for a new authenticator, so that's because we're on my actual IP now. Please don't instant ban me. I just need to get this quest done. So this guy might be a little hard to actually hit with the bronze knives. I'm also going to go all the way to Zaya and walk across the entire continent of Zaya just to get lizard kickers to boost my range up a little bit so I get a more chance of hitting on this guy because I need to hit on this guy or else my rings of recoil will be a total waste. Okay, we finally made it to the Shazian pub. I don't know if this was necessary, but like I said, I'm not about to go make some more recoils and farm rings of sapphire for the rest of my life. Oh, they also have stew. All right, so I found out the wooded shield actually somehow adds magic bonus, so we're definitely taking that off. We don't need that. I'm gonna start with my armor off, and I'll eventually wield that to get uh, more negative magic bonus, but I want to try and hit closer to the start of the fight rather than the end of the fight. Let's run. I got two tuna to make it there. Make sure I actually search the trap on that lever because if I don't, that can also kill me. And I've had it happen on another account before. I know I know from experience. 
pull that. Please don't kill me. Okay. Whew. We're good. Now we just have to do the actual hard part and kill the boss. Alright, so when I summon this guy, he's not actually going to attack me, even though it looks like he is. I have to talk to him first. I'm gonna wait to talk to him whenever he walks over here, because I want to try and get him trapped in this position. Okay. I should have brought my Chronicle as an emergency teleport out of here, but I'm a little bit too dumb to do that. So, now he's in a safe spot, as well as in a safe spot here. I'm gonna go ahead and start this fight off, and let's hope for the best, shall we? Let's go ahead and wear a Ring of Recoil to start. Sip our Lizard Kicker to start. As well, I wanted to actually turn my area sound effects on, because I can tell with area sound effects when he's going to attack me. Alright, I just need to hit a 1 and I can stop worrying about when I actually have to recoil this thing and running out of food entirely. Alright, there's our 1. Let's put our armor on and eat these cabbages. Yes, oh my god, I did not lag, I didn't die, we somehow got somewhat lucky, let's hope it worked. Okay, it worked! Yes, that actually worked. Thank god, that worked. I wasn't sure if I needed to do the last hit of damage even, <laughs> I just re-auto-retaliated in case I needed to be in combat with it when it died, but we got it, we have how many points of recoil damage left? 19 points of recoil damage left, holy shit. So, if I died right there, that would have been a waste of 14 and a half hours. <laughs> so, luckily we did not die. I need to go rebank though and get the Limpet Roots for this witch here. There is one more part of this quest I'm a little bit concerned about. Alright, I brought some food and we've got our 20 Limpet Roots. Actually, I'm gonna go back and get a Chronicle instead of this Wooden Shield. The Wooden Shield gives, you know, epic bonuses, but I think the Chronicle is gonna be better here because uh, I do need an emergency teleport out of here. You see how there's a skeleton right there? I'm gonna hop worlds and make sure there's no skeletons on that side because there is a stall at the end of this witch's teleport that I remember and you are stalled for a few ticks and that skeleton could combo me out and I couldn't eat and all of that good stuff so let's make sure we find a world without a skeleton just standing over there by that side. Okay, I think this is good if I just hurry through this dialogue here. See how you're stalled right there for a few ticks? Yeah, that would not have been good if I actually had been over that way. Holy shit, this is multi as well. I did not know that. I did not know this area was multi. That is fucking scary. Those could easily, two of those could get on me in this multi area here and just one hit me. I don't think these guardians of Armadillo are aggressive. What I'm gonna do now though is try and pull this NPC out of the room. You don't actually have to kill the Guardians of Armadillo as long as they're out of your line of sight. You can pull the staff off the table and it's good that I am doing this portion of the quest too because you can choose sides. I don't want to choose to side with them because then I'll have to kill Lucian and obviously as a level 3 I really don't want to have to kill something else. They max it a 6, so I could lure this NPC out of this room. Like I said, I could be using alts right now, but I really want to do this all solo. Hopefully they don't all come after me when I attack one. I forgot they act as like barricades here. Okay, I think we should be good now to take the staff. Yes, we got it. So let's head on out of here, complete the quest. Whew, that was kind of scary. I did not expect her to literally act like a fucking barricade there and trap me in. I barely remembered that was a thing. I was like, why am I not moving? Am I lagging? Hey, let's get some free farming XP too. I forgot about this cadaver berry bush that I never even needed because I already had 26 farming. Let's hand in the staff and finish the quest as a level three with only one range, one all stats, 10 HP. And there we go. Now we're not level three anymore. 
but we're the lowest possible combat level to ever exist with this quest done and no one's done it this low before because no one thinks to wield ice arrows with bronze knives especially on a stupid level 3 hardcore iron man who is dumb enough to take on this challenge me but now i have a unique account this is likely going to be fixed in the coming weeks so if you want to make some unique fresh kind of really weird awful account like i just did which you probably don't you can go ahead and probably do that for the next one or two weeks before they fix this or who knows it might already be fixed because i am on my ip right now and and uh yeah that usually doesn't go too well. I will have more Defense Saga series videos out soon. It's just a very RNG based task at the moment. I won't go into what it is exactly, but I've been doing it for three solid months. So my main priority is going to be that series, but you know, to pay the bills, to keep everything at bay for the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and put out some mini series or some mini episodes on other things you'll see in the very coming weeks. In the next four weeks, you should be seeing around four uploads. So be prepared. There's gonna be a lot of cool new fresh content. So I hope you all did enjoy this unique account this playthrough you've probably never seen anyone do because it's so ridiculous. If you did, please drop a subscription on the channel. As well, shout out to my Patreons. You can support me further there if you want to. I'll link that in the description below. And I'll see you all here very shortly.